All right. Three, two, one. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the first mail episode. My name is Ralph Delgado. I am the founder of Novelty Group. We're one of the fastest growing companies in the United States. The purpose of this podcast is to bring you on a journey as we build our empire and share our stories and the stories of other people who are also on their journey to fulfilling their goals and dreams. We want to motivate and inspire our listeners to be better people in their lives and careers. We want to bring you real value, real motivation with the truth without sugarcoating anything because we believe that's what the world needs. I'll memorize this. This is my first episode. Keeping it real with you guys. All right, guys. So again, Ralph Delgado here. Glad, super, super, super glad to be back. Um, today I have a special guest here. I wanted to bring them on because I have seen their journey since the beginning. And when I mean the beginning, I literally mean from the start where they started at their home and build their business into what it is now. So I want to introduce to you Miguel and Ashley from Simply Crafty Customs. How are you guys doing today? Good. Uh, how are you doing, Ralph? Good, good, good. Thank you guys for making the time. Uh, doing a podcast does take time and it really is about the guests. I want to make sure that they're bringing value to you guys and making sure that we ask the right questions so we can inspire you guys and motivate you guys. Okay. A little bit about Simply Crafty Customs. I'm going to ask you guys a little bit of questions. So you guys can talk a little bit more about the business and what you guys do. Um, so, Ashley, if you want to let us know a little bit about, about what Simply Crafty Customs is. Um, so we are a laser engraving um, business. So we specialize in personalized items. Um, we are an e-commerce. Um, so we mainly just sell online. Perfect. Perfect. Miguel, a little bit more. Yeah, a bit so, more depth of it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, she covered it. We were pretty much just a personalized um, laser engraving business. We started um, with pretty much just tequila boards. And then we started slowly expanding our um, our catalog. So we slowly started moving into like CNC stuff, um, engraving on metals, things like that. But we primarily focus on personalized gifts um, and selling online. So it's wood engraving, correct? Or you guys engrave yep. on more things than um, just that? We also do acrylics. So like plastics, um, metals, wood. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, perfect. leather. Things like that. Sweet. We'll show right now on the screen um, some of the products that they do so you guys can get more familiar with what they do. Super, super cool products. Very, very personalized, like they were saying. Um, and I want to get into the journey a little bit more about what you guys do, what your guys' background. So we'll start off with Ashley. Ashley, what's your background? Um, where did you? Do you feel like you were born to be an entrepreneur or was it developed? Um, tell me a little bit about that. Um, I definitely think with the way that I was raised from my parents, very hardworking and very just willing to always want to be better. I feel like I've always had that entrepreneurship mindset. It's just something that I wasn't surrounded by. Um, I definitely feel that I kind of got that from Miguel, from his dad. Um, I didn't get to meet him, but he would always kind of talk to me about him and then owning a business. And I feel like that's what inspired me. Um, but I will say with his mindset and the way that I was raised is what makes this work. Awesome. Sounds really good. And so you feel like you were born to be an entrepreneur? Or you kind of shaped yourself into that? Um, with the I people that surround you because I know you mentioned Miguel was a big part of that yeah yeah definitely so you feel like you were because of the influence that you had yeah okay cool uh Miguel I call him Mike by the way so if Mike comes out like the word, when I call him Mike I call him Mike but um I'm gonna call him Miguel right now um so what do you think as far as like your entrepreneur bug were you born with it um tell me a little bit about how you started all this so um for me, it was like always seeing my dad. Um, he had his own business growing up. I mean, when I was growing up. What type of business was it? So he had a landscaping business. Okay. So nothing um, nothing compared to what we yeah, did. Yeah, no. Okay. No. okay. Um, so I seen that and I knew like instantly like that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be um, in business. I didn't know what it was going to be at first. I went to school for civil engineering. I went through, um, got a job in civil engineering. And then I, I thought I was going to end up with my own engineering firm. Okay. Took a hard right and I yeah. ended up here. Okay. So. Sweet, sweet. So it sounds like you guys both were a big influence to each other. Yeah. Right. So, and, and as far as like the Simply Crafty Customs business goes, um, I want to get more into the, the background. Yeah. Um, tell me more about like your financial upbringing. That's really what I want you guys to share a little bit more about because I think with what we want to do is inspire a lot of people to know we can come from either having some type of money or having no money at all. So yeah. Ashley, well, how was your upbringing when you guys first started and where are you guys at now? Um, if I could, yeah, go ahead. Um, go ahead. 
So it's really weird. So for me and Ashley, we're like complete opposites. So I grew up um, like middle, middle, uh, middle, middle class. Middle class um, and we were financially okay. And then my dad passed away when I was 13 um, and everything went left. Yeah. Um, so then we ended up losing our house. Um, so I grew up kind of reverse as what Ashley did. So Ashley, she grew up not really having much. Um, her fa- her parents worked really, really hard, got a good job and they're, they're pretty, they're pretty successful. So it's like the complete opposite. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Ash. Um, so to kind of touch on what Miguel was saying. So, um, I was raised on WIC. I'm a WIC child. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what's WIC? It's where it's government assistance. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I grew up on that. Um, definitely something that, um, when I was that age, it's not something that I was proud of. I was almost embarrassed, so to speak. Um, but now that I'm older, I definitely see the growth in my parents and, um, just like their, the difference between when I was first born all the way up until now, their hard work and perseverance kind of got them to where they are now. Um, I would definitely say, it wasn't easy. Um, we lived in a one bedroom apartment with, uh, it was my parents and me and my brother in a one bedroom. So it was rough, but those are honestly probably my best memories that I have. Um, but now that I look back at it, it's definitely shaped me into a better person. It shaped me into wanting better for my future family. So, um, definitely very opposite upbringing. I can see that. Definitely. Definitely. Okay. Um, a little bit more about Miguel. So your dad passed away. I want to go into like the obstacles that you guys are facing because, um, yeah, I, it obviously shaped your life the way that you're, and we can obviously relate to that. Right. Um, having your dad pass away at a pretty young age of 13, um, and it says like things turned south right away. What was it that kept you wanting to go further? Because a lot of people here in situations like this where it's very life changing, they tend to either resort to drugs, take an easier route. But for me, it sounds you graduated uh, civil engineering, like you said. What kept you going? What was the purpose? Was it to prove that to your dad, like he was proud of you? Or was it just a self-fulfillment that you wanted to accomplish for yourself, for your family? Well, what do you feel it was? Yeah, so like, I wanted to prove a lot of people wrong. Um, I had a lot of people that doubted me, doubted my family. Um, and I just wanted to be the one. I wanted to prove people wrong. Um, it was just... Yeah, and, like, growing up, having stuff, getting everything taken away, it just, like, it sucks, you know? It's, like, it's, it's embarrassing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just, I didn't want to feel that again. Love that. That's real right there because a lot of people won't admit that, you know, I want to prove motherfuckers wrong, and that's a big motivation, I'm sure you know, especially what you're going through as far as, like, Feeling embarrassed. Tell me a little bit more about that. As far as like feeling embarrassed, what was it that would mainly embarrassed you? Because there could have been a lot of things, you know, was it the fact that you guys um, felt pushed out or what was it? Um, well, one thing was losing our house okay. that, that paid, that played like a huge role on like a huge toll on me. Um, I mean, that's pretty embarrassing, you know, like having your own house and, and admitting then, it too. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's not like we were renting and we moved somewhere else. Like, I, I couldn't lie and say that. Yeah. So it was like, it's hard to, it's just like, I don't know. I, it was something I didn't want to talk about. I would kind of lie about it. Yeah. Like, it was just something I didn't, I wasn't comfortable sharing with people. I agree. You know? I feel you 100%. Um, I am on the same boat as you with when it comes to that. We moved houses like probably 10 times. We would get kicked out, evicted, and... I love that you said that like a lot of people aren't willing to admit that proving other people wrong is a huge motivator. And, it, and when you have nothing, you are trying to search for something that that motivates you. And having that is super, super big. Um, it's like a dark side. I like to talk about. We all have that dark side where we want to prove motherfuckers wrong because they laughed at us because they made us less or we felt that way. Maybe that wasn't their intent, but we took it that way and we use that energy to push us forward. That's exactly what you did and what you're doing currently to build the company that you guys are building. So that's, that's awesome. Miguel. thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, that's the type of value we want to bring into the, to the listeners to know that, you know, I'm sure there's people out there with the same issues. I'm sure there's people going through different things, different troubles, maybe not as heavy as you have that motivates them to keep pushing forward. So 
um, Ashley, with you, I um, I felt Miguel had the privilege of, you know, having a middle class family and and really growing up like that and then losing it completely. That gave him the fire. What was it with you that that gave you that motivation to want to build, um, and and just be better overall? Because I know a little bit about you too. If you want to talk about it, um, your degree and and what college you went to and all that, because you graduated as well. Mm -hmm. So I went to school for business, um, but my specialty was human resources. So. Um, when I got out of college, my first job was working for a hotel as an HR uh, manager. So um, back to the question that you asked me of kind of like what inspired me. Um, I feel like, you know, thankfully my parents were able to get out of that hole and be able to build a better future for us. Where, you, where do your parents come from? Are they um, born and raised here? Yeah, they were born and raised here. Okay. Um, I will say that um, they were very fortunate enough to get a job um, at the port, which allowed them for better opportunity for us um, because both my parents didn't go to college. Okay. Um, and my mom also had me at a really, really young age too. So um, I definitely feel that I just, to me, I was inspired by Miguel and also just really wanting more for myself because I feel like growing up in Wilmington, it's the typical um, work at the port and, and not to not to say that there's anything wrong with that, but I feel like that's the norm here, and I feel like I wanted to be different. I feel like I wanted more for myself, and I wanted to challenge myself and see, like, what can Ashley do? What am I capable of besides just going to college and, and getting a job? And that was definitely against my parents' wishes to be very transparent. Like, yeah. I'm not going to sit here and say this is what they wanted for their daughter because my parents are very traditional. Um, and I think in a very positive way, they've learned to accept what I choose to do. And now they've they've seen our growth. Um, but I think I just I look at my grandparents and it makes me emotional because to to see them work so hard and cross the border get papers and work so hard like i don't want to be average of course love it Sorry. <laughs> love it. no no thank you thank you so much I, I i think it's a privilege for everyone to see and admire the people before them that way we can see the sacrifices that they made that way we can honor them you know we have to honor them i've always said um and i explained to my family too like we have to be better than our parents and a lot of people are going to take it the wrong way and say you know um no i don't want to be better than my mom or dad we'll never be no it's your fucking responsibility they have your grandparents crossed the border your dad no longer here but he built something it is you have to honor them you have to honor them and you honor them by being better than them they do not want to see you worse they don't want to see you um you know just living a difficult life and i think to touch on what you said about your parents it's not the fact that i don't think um i always say like it's a lack of knowledge and what they want to do as a parent is protect they want to make sure that you're on the right path but sometimes you know there's the rebel child and that could be us you yeah. know that rebel child that doesn't want to go through the traditional route and we want to make something bigger and we dream bigger and i think with the internet and everything that we have now we're able to dream bigger and you know be bigger mm -hmm. so i never this goes for my family too with my mom i i obviously now it's a little different i'm older but all of my 20s no matter how successful i was i never graduated college i never went to university i was never that kid that she wanted to portray or wanted to feel proud of but i've made her proud other ways you know so i still to this day kind of feel there might be that but that's how they are that's what they are you know they're they're that way um they're very traditional and yeah uh, I think we just have to honor our parents. Thank you guys so much for sharing about that. Um, I know while we're dealing with different things in life, you know, obstacles within life and, and um, business too, what are some habits or routines that have really helped you guys during difficult times? That's why I wanted to touch a little bit about, you know, when, you're, when your dad passed away, you, you, you talked about that, that, I call it dark side, like that dark side, you're like, I wanted to prove people wrong. Um, but what is something that has kept you consistent through the years that that in now in business too that keeps you wanting to want more? Because I see you guys, and in the past three years, you guys have built a massive company. I mean, you guys have already broken a million dollars in sales within two to three years, which is unheard of, really. It takes a long time uh, to do something like that. So congratulations on that. But with that, like, what are some things, some routines, some habits that you guys have that help you guys stay consistent and stay hungry? I would definitely say just having a really big goal and then breaking 
that goal into smaller goals um, because I think being in business, like it can get really overwhelming and it almost just feels like it's never enough. Like you're never doing enough. Um, and it's not to say that that's a problem. I think that speaks on amb ambition, but I just, I feel like because there's so many things that we have to do, um, me and Miguel like to sit down and really set like a big goal for the year and then break it down by like monthly, weekly, and then daily. And then I think that, that's what has helped us um are these goals like financial goals they can be financial like let's say this year you guys want to make a million two million dollars you yeah. want to break it down by how many items we need to sell yeah they can be financial but also just personal because i feel that if there wasn't that personal growth we wouldn't be able to reach the financial part of it of course of course what are some personal like things that you guys have right now that you guys are doing that helps you because I know business, like, it's so stressful. It's so, so stressful, and it always does feel overwhelming, and I don't think it gets easier. I think mm -hmm. we're better at putting up with stress. I think we're better at dealing with, with problems, different level problems. So I know there's some things that you guys do that, frankly, keeps you guys sane. It could be going on trips. It could be the gym, anything specific that you guys that you guys do. Here we go. Um, well, to keep us sane... Um, I mean, I would say just. You don't know how we do it. <laughs> <laughs> we have to break it down. <laughs> that's funny. Well, yeah, sometimes you don't. Yeah. Sometimes you don't reflect that you're like, just, shit. What I do don't we know, do? To be <laughs> well, kind of breaking stuff down, like how she said. So one thing that we implemented this year was like our quarterly calendar. Okay. So we were like pretty unorganized, I would say, especially for the 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 how First big our well, yeah for <laughs> how big our company has gotten i feel like we were pretty unorganized um so one thing that we kind of added was a quarterly calendar so now we're not just looking next week two weeks we're looking okay. towards yeah each so, quarter because mm -hmm. usually you start off with like thinking what's what am i going to do the next day yeah. and what am i going to do the next day right yeah. now you guys have broken it down into like doing a quarterly calendar so what do those quarterly calendars consist of for so, your business or or the team or your life so we are like really big on like holidays. So okay. a lot of like the holidays we have pre-launches. So we do a lot, all of our product photography in-house. So everything is scheduled out. Um, I, it's like six weeks out before, um, before the actual holiday. So okay. we do our full launch six weeks out. Um, so things like that have really helped us stay organized, not fall behind, um, keep those goals um in front of you. yeah right in front of us perfect so it sounds like you guys are doing a lot more preparing than you used to which is yeah. super yeah. super crucial to success preparing is like you have to make sure everything is planned ahead of time to make sure you have the outcome that you wish to desire so right now you have six uh like about a six week gap before holiday season before a typical holiday to launch your items correct yeah mm -hmm. perfect um now it looks like you guys is doing well but i know for a business to do well there has to be something personal that's going on there has to be something that is pushing you because at the end of the day to be to want success it's because we want something a little bit bigger than ourselves or it can be just for ourselves um what is currently motivating you guys to to, to set these goals to break down these million dollar two million multi-million dollar plans into quarterly goals what are what are some things you guys are looking forward to that that, that is motivating you guys right now so for us i feel like it's our team our team like really trusts us like with where we're heading and I, we just, we can't let them down. So we have all these people counting on us. How many people do you guys have right now? Right now we have um, six full-time employees. Okay. Um, and then about like another six that are seasonal that okay. we'll bring on. Because like I said, we do a lot of holiday stuff. So when, once the holidays come around, it, it gets really hectic around here. Okay. So, so your team is what you are feeling like you guys are working for them now. Like making sure you guys are building something that they can you know, make a, a, a life with right. it. You know, you, they want to come obviously be productive here, make sure they're working, but also give them that fulfillment, yep. right? Give them that fulfillment of like, okay, there's a purpose here. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, we're super, super big on teams on other podcasts that I've gone on or every time you guys see me post, I do talk about, I give all the credit to my team, everything, nothing would be possible without our team or the people that support us. Um, what are something that you guys do together with your team to have that type of culture? Cause every time I, I walk in here, everyone's super friendly. Everyone is like excited to be here. There's always something new going on. The The products are different. So if I feel like there's always something changing here. And in the past, I mean, two to three months, this entire building has changed completely. So I'm sure they're super inspired. So what are some things that you guys do to kind of keep them united and keep that community sense? 
Um, we started doing a lot of like really cool group activities. So we started a book club. So now That's we have cool. the Simply Book Club. Okay. Uh, we we have a, a running club now too. Sweet, so we'll sweet. go. We do runs. I did see you guys run the five k. Yeah. Right. You guys have run a couple already, right? Um. <laughs> yeah, we okay, did cool. one. Yeah, one no, as but a team. Yeah. We do like um like team walks and stuff. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, so we'll try to do that. Um, team walks? Yeah. Like you guys walk around? Yeah, we'll try to hit like a mile under like 15 minutes. We'll oh, just have cool. like goals. So oh, cool. Yeah. Like around the warehouse? Or yeah, we'll do, go oh, around like outside. the block. Yeah, around the block. Okay, yeah. so no excuses. You don't have to go to the gym. You got to make sure you come in and you get it done. Yep. Yeah. Okay, that's perfect. Any other activities that you guys do together? I know there's a lot of bonding when it comes to that. We just ran our first 5K as a group, and it was cool to see. Like, we're outside of work. We're all pushing each other, cheering our cheering each other on. So I know it brings a sense of community, but there's anything else that you guys do with them currently? I know the book clubs are really I like that idea. I think we might take that from you guys. I think... Um, or anything that has, like, really helped you guys. I would say that... Um, the team, like, kind of to touch on what Miguel was saying, like, the trust, how they trust us. Um, we give them that same trust back. Um, we are very open-minded, the same way that they are to us. So I will say that without them, we wouldn't be here because there's a lot of ideas that, like, I'll, I I want everyone to come in here and be opinionated, obviously, place and time. But um, I think that they've given us a lot of value um, in terms of, like, changing things or processes because they're the ones that are in it not us. And so I think um, me and Miguel are really good on making sure that they know that they have that with us. They're always able to share with us like, hey, I think there's a better process or I think we should do this this way. Um, to kind of give you like an example, um, we have Kayla, who is our um, customer service manager. She's very, very creative. And I feel like um, she's given me a different perspective of creativity in terms of doing things differently. Um, and it's really cool to just like combine two like, since I'm also very creative, just combining our minds together and coming up with, like, better ideas. And I feel like applying that to each and one of our members, too, has allowed us to be able to not only have that bond, but to be able to grow together. Got it. So Simply is not a place where it is, like, your opinion is the only one that matters, right? Yeah. Everyone contributes to the, the growth of the company. Yeah. Yep. And having those right people in place, I'm sure, has, like, exponentially grown in your guys' business or even, on, frankly, made it a better place to work for the team members where they yeah. know they can trust you guys like you mentioned they can trust you to come in and and they'll help you improve the company they'll help you make things better because as founders as ceos as owners we're not always in the trenches we forget that there is people in there doing what we used to do you know and they can do it better yeah. and we're always looking for those types of people that are going to make it better and sometimes a lot better than than us and that's our job as founders and owners is to put these people in the right places so they can succeed um right now your team is about six people you said right mm -hmm. perfect and before you had this entire team it was just you two right so tell me about how simply started where it came from and kind of the the, the obstacles you face along the way when more like a practical obstacles like the growth because i know you guys started in your um i'll let you guys explain where did you guys start from well i mean i would give the credit to you um, <laughs> to be honest, uh, we would have never ended up in this e-commerce business if it weren't for you. So obviously we kind of, we, we used to manage some of your shops. Um, mm -hmm. so we, that's how we kind of got our foot in the door with e-commerce and Etsy and things like that. So that was like our, our main foundation. You were able to give us the blueprint for Etsy and selling on online. online. Um, but if you want to. So, um, pretty much. We already had, like, a, a an idea of Etsy just because of Ralph. He gave us, like Miguel said, like, the blueprint for it. So that's how we kind of – I had never shopped on Etsy before, and mm -hmm. neither has Miguel. And Ralph pretty much showed us, like, the way around it. And um, this was during COVID, so we were really bored, and I had showed Miguel an ad for a machine. And um, – I showed it to him and he was like, this is cool. We should get it. And I was like, uh, are you crazy? Like, I'm just showing you. Like, what no. kind of machine was it? It was a Glowforge. It was a laser engraver. Okay, yeah. Okay. And it was, it was made, it was a hobby laser. So it was perfect for like an apartment. Um, and at the time they had kept like postponing COVID every two weeks. So I was like, no, I'm going to go back to work because also at the time I had gotten laid off. So I had laid everybody else off, and then I laid myself off. Because you're Mike, HR, right? Yeah, so that was fun. <laughs> and then Miguel was still working, but he was working from home. So um, I pretty much was bored at home, and then he was like, I really think we should get the machine. And I'm like, um, I don't think so. 
<laughs> he was like, I really do. We're bored. And like they kept postponing COVID. So um, he was like, I'm going to get it. And I was like, okay, whatever. Just get it. Because yeah. I don't know. I just feel like Miguel, once he like has his mindset on something, like he just wants to do it. And he's very stubborn, like in a positive way, um, of course. So he got the machine. And then our intention was to start using it. And it it sat there for months. Um until one day it was valentine's day and then i was like hey like we should actually try to make something um so we started with it was like a valentine's day tag and we pretty much just listed it um since we already were knowledgeable in etsy and i was like okay let's just hope we make like 10 bucks like i could buy a starbucks like it'll be good so that was the intention um the and intent also wasn't to grow it into what it is now no at all at all <laughs> like i was planning to go back to work a couple months as soon okay. as they said covid was over um and so i feel like miguel ha already had the background with like his civil engineering because of his designing aspect mm -hmm. um and i was more of like this is cute i want to make it how can we make that happen so once we launched the product um we sold one and i was like super excited i was like oh my god like we made ten dollars and the first cha -ching. yeah that's when i first started i was like oh my god this is so cool and then like a week later we just start we just kept selling more and more and more and i still remember like our first deposit was like three thousand dollars and i was like holy crap like this is this real, is real. <laughs> like people uh, there's a market for it and i just think that i was never aware of it because it's not something that i like shopped on yeah. um so then from there we started off with this product with our tequila board um that was like our next product that we launched and that pretty much like took was this off. from home still this oh, was still from still. home wow okay okay so um we were still at home we still had one machine we were in an apartment with roommates so we had our it was a single bedroom and then we had our machine plotted up against the window which was illegal because <laughs> you're not supposed to be having smokers in irvine okay <laughs> um, so all this was from home in your room yeah okay damn so we had like a crafting table and then our bed it was very tight remember yeah <laughs> and roommates too yeah. the roommates were next door in like the other room were they cool with you guys just starting a business there I think yeah, so. I mean, they yeah, never, man. honestly, I don't think they minded at all. They were always working anyways. Right. Um, but pretty much we started off with the second product, which was a tequila board. So it's like, um, it has four inserts for shot glasses and then an insert for garnishes and then an insert for salt. So it's supposed to be like a portable board that you can kind of take around. And um, we started off with one of those and put like a generic saying on there. And then it just like took off. It was to the point where, we couldn't keep up with like the demand um and, and all from etsy all from etsy wow okay so um, it was a product that you built that people were going crazy for basically. yeah wow okay yeah so i don't know we just we couldn't keep up with it and then that's when you had approached us about telling us like the potential that you've seen in us and to be honest still at that time we were like this is I was already still planning to go back to work. I didn't like I said, kind of growing up I was very traditional, like going to school, getting a job. So in my mind, I'm like, I got to go back to work. Yeah. You know, building a business was not in my books at all. At um, all. That's really now that I know you more. I, I It's hard for me to believe that because I feel like you've always had that bug. But I see Mike has definitely had that massive influence where it's like, you know, like there's yeah. more to life. Yeah. yeah, I think he he definitely like changed my mindset because I'm like he would always tell me like I want to own a business and I'm like okay yeah just like me listening to his crazy yeah. ideas but it was weird how everything just kind of aligned and how it landed in our path because I think if COVID didn't happen I think I would still probably be working because I don't I don't think I would have just quit my job and and found something yes. All right, so, and at that time, how many products or tequila boards were you guys fulfilling? It was like 100. 100? Yeah. Okay, and you guys weren't able to do any more? No. With, with your current, you know, we, setup? Yeah, we pretty much, like, couldn't keep up with the demand that we had. Okay, how'd you guys, you guys ended up upgrading, moving out of it? What <clears> was the next step after that? Yeah, so we pretty much, um, are we touching on this? <laughs> What is it? <laughs> you, you're our partner. Upgrade. You can upgrade. You can upgrade. <laughs> oh just say upgrade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we pretty much upgraded the machine, but it was a machine that pretty much, it was at this point that we knew we had to like get out of our situation where we were in a one bedroom apartment. Sorry, not a one bedroom apartment. We were sharing with roommates. We knew that we had to like get out um, because we were going to get a bigger machine and that machine wasn't going to fit in the room. So 
we decided to upgrade the machine, make the investment, and pretty much move out um, to get somewhere that had a two-bedroom. And um, one of our rooms, when we moved, so we set up one of the rooms as, like, our our warehouse, so to speak. So it was so big that it couldn't even fit through the door to give the you machine. an idea. Yeah. So the first machine was a Glowforge, and this new one, what is it? The, it was or the epilogue. One? Epilogue, okay, yeah. and laser engravers. Yeah, so the first one was kind of like a gimmicky laser. Yeah. I don't want to Nothing throw compared shade. to what yeah. you have right now. Yeah, okay. it was more for like hobbyists, people that, honestly, it was for the cricket crowd. Okay. It was people who were kind of working with the like cricket. Like crafters from home that only occasionally are going to get an order here and there. Nothing for like production that you guys were having at that time. Yeah, yeah exactly. So right there, you had to upgrade if you wanted to continue to produce at, which, at the rate you wanted to. Yeah. Right? So this big machine didn't fit through you guys' is. No, Miguel had to take off the door. Oh. <laughs> to yeah, it okay. like it just yeah. barely fit. So perfectly, just, I'm yeah. sure. And yeah. you guys set it up in a, in a separate room. So we set it up in a separate room, and then um, to run the machine, you have to have ventilation. So we set it up. Miguel, well, Miguel set up the ventilation through the washer and dryer, which led out to the patio. Okay. And um, in Irvine, they're really strict on like you cannot be barbecuing, you cannot be grilling into that and Miguel had a smoker back there so um sometimes we'd have to run the machine like in at weird hours um but we pretty much started getting complaints about smoking on the smoker oh wow so people thought we were making food because it was wood chips burning but we were actually like making orders um so this thing went out your window into the so I made a hole in the wall <laughs> So, Which was so, probably not permitted at yeah. the time. Okay. So luckily. It Don't was, say where you lived. <laughs> not Irvine. <laughs> luckily, the bedroom had the patio right behind it. That is luck. And then it has a closet with the with the washer and dryer in there. Okay. So I ran the ducting into the washer and dryer so you can't see any ducting yeah. to our patio. And then out of there, it was coming straight out that closet out over the smoker. So it looked like the smoker was on and running. So people started catching on, thought we were smoking all day. We so complaint. we started, yeah, we started running it at oh, night. Really? Okay. Yeah, because it, it produces so much smoke. So like, you guys only started, so you guys were working at it during the day. And yeah. when people started complaining, you guys just ran the production at night. Yeah. It's because Damn. Miguel thought it would be genius to do the first floor so we don't have to carry the machine to the third floor. But the first floor was the main walkway where people so would walk. Oh, I see. So, of course, if you see smoke, you're like, what is what this? is this and during the day too i'm sure right? yeah <laughs> that's funny um so there you guys had that issue you guys decided to go into production just at night so you limited your production yeah right and you just had to run it at the time yeah so at the time miguel was still working at his job and then i was um still like still doing this full time and so miguel would have to help me like set up the files because i wasn't really good with the whole programming part i did still have to learn it but i wouldn't say i was as comfortable as he was um, and then he would help me run the order sometimes in the night if I couldn't like stay up because I would be up during the day packaging the orders from the night before. I see. Yeah. So you were, you were full time at the time. Yeah. You were full time and then Mike would come in at night and just run the machines, make sure all the designs were giving you all the resources. Yeah. And when did you guys, after that, th there, did you guys go full time while you guys were at the house or when did that happen when you guys both decided to go full time? Um, it wasn't until... After, right? Yeah. I think Do you guys have one machine still when you decided to go full-time? I think we still kept the Glowforge. So it was still the epilogue and then the Glowforge okay. just so we could have two. Mm. And then um, Miguel had, like, a situation at work, so he decided to, to leave his job. Okay. And then um, that's when he was like, I think if there's a sign, this is it for me to just join you full-time. Because it was really hard to try to just have me do it by myself mm -hmm. because I couldn't stay up for 24 hours it was really hard for me to try to do everything and um he pretty much was like I think I just need to do it which was very scary because now that would mean that he's not bringing in consistent income it's just now we're relying on Etsy mm -hmm. so that was a really big risk um but I think honestly we didn't even really put that much thought into it like now looking back, I'm like, holy crap, we you guys just said yourself in the let's fire. Just figure it yeah. out. Okay. <clears throat> so what is it that that just you, Miguel, uh, you decided to like, okay, I'm gonna go full into this. Because I'm sure, you know, you could have got 
another job somewhere else doing what you your your civil engineering somewhere else easily um or what was it that you're like i want to go into this 100 percent um for me i mean i knew i I, like I said, I always wanted to have my own business mm -hmm. and I seen this and I seen the potential and I just knew like it, it, this business wouldn't work without me, without Ashley. Yeah. It needs the both of us. Mm -hmm. So I just, I decided to take the leap. Nice. Regret it? No. <laughs> At all. I don't, I don't think I could ever go back. Uh, never no. after, after that. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. So I'm sure there's a lot of people that, that don't want to take that leap because of, you know, they're frankly scared. You know, they don't come maybe from an entrepreneurial background where steady income has always been something that they've had. Um, what is, what was it that, that really made you guys like together say, we're going to build something big. Um, I know you mentioned family before, but frankly, when I first started my entrepreneurship journey, proving people wrong was one thing, but I also wanted a new car. I also wanted to live somewhere nice. You know, those are things that I that I knew having a job maybe not me. I wouldn't have had that so, I wouldn't say quickly, but the way that I wanted to. So what were some material things, maybe trips that kind of pushed you guys or something that made you now decide fully, you know what, I'm done. I want to make sure that I do this 100%. Anything material? Um, I think people are scared to talk about that. No, no, I think you need materialistic motivation. I feel like... I think even where we lived, we lived in Irvine for, well, Miguel lived in Irvine longer than I did, but like we seven, lived, eight years? yeah, you guys lived in Irvine for seven years, which he, is far from where you guys grew up. Yeah, yeah. And the environment is just completely different. You're surrounded by people that have nice cars. They, people in college that are driving Lambos, like I was driving a Honda. Yeah. <laughs> you cannot compare. Um, I think just seeing that being surrounded by people that, um, are have made it so to speak um i think that's like motivation in itself just to see the upbringing because i feel like when we sit down and talk about like our future i feel like what i want for the future for our future children is to pretty much grow up in an environment where they see that and um it's not to talk down on where we live no, it's just all. to say that it just it's motivating. Yes, definitely. To want more. One of the biggest motivations for me was my mom's boss. My mom and dad used to clean houses in PV. And I remember I was like three years old and they would bring me. I remember seeing, I'm never going to forget walking. It was like a big old driveway all the way up to his house. He had like a, a little river by his house, like literally in the estate. And I remember seeing a red Lamborghini. I will never forget that. And Frankly, that's one of the things that keeps me going. Like, I, I want that. I want that. And the, one of the things that got me started. So I know having material goals is definitely something that we all at some point need to have, you know, need to have to make sure that we keep pushing forward. Um, also, going back to that leap that you took um, for both of you guys. Did you guys have like full support from people when you guys did those dis type of decisions? I feel like I did. Um, Ashley, not so much. I did it. Um, I think it was just cause like, like I said, like my family is pretty used to it. They've, they seen my dad have his own business. They seen you as well. So it was something familiar for, for her family. It was just something that they, they were not, they're not familiar with. I agree. Yeah. Ash, we'll talk a little bit more about that. If, if, if you'd like to where, um, we all get support, different types of support. And like I mentioned before, it's not that people don't want to support you. It's more like, that's not what they saw you mm -hmm. as, you know, um, how difficult was it or what are some of the things that not having a hundred percent support or I don't want to say a hundred percent support, but more like someone's backing you, you know, cause it is risky. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I don't think this journey is for everyone. I do not think that. And I've talked to, to Jess before and I don't want my kids to be entrepreneurs. It's stressful. It's so stressful. The stress that we go through, like really we're not mentally sane all the time we're mm -hmm. always thinking about work we're always wanting to all right what's next or the company's you're not doing what it was supposed to do it's just very stressful so i don't want my kids to have that and i can see that i can see that so how was it not having people fully understand you um it was definitely challenging i'm not gonna lie i feel like i did have a couple mental breakdowns just because i was like just it felt like, is this the right choice? Like I knew I believed in me, but to not have the support of my family, it was kind of messing with me a little bit because I could see the vision, but then I'm like, wait, is this the right thing? 
Um, I think I vividly remember this conversation with my dad when I told him, like, I'm not going to go back because they did call me from the hotel to come back already. And I had a decision to make, like, am I going to go back or am I not? And one of his main concerns from me for me was having benefits. Like, what are you going to do when you get older? Your Social Security, what are you going to do if you get sick? What are you going to do? Just questioning everything. And I told him, like, this is what I want to do and, and I'll figure out the rest later. And um, I did have a conversation with Miguel and, and I know... Um, I like shared with him those concerns because obviously like it hurt me, but I knew it came from a protective mode. Um, just him wanting to make sure that his daughter was okay at the end of the day, because obviously living in California, like it's expensive, um, even healthcare itself. So I knew where those concerns came from. Um, but I think just having Miguel as support and him telling me like, we're going to be okay. Like I already knew I felt even more supported because I went to school so I knew if I wanted a job I can always apply and get a job like that was always in the back of my mind if I absolutely needed to it's not something that I would want for myself but I knew you if could fall back on I it. could fall back on something um but that was really hard and I think now being like our fourth year in business I think my family's starting to come around now and accept it um and they've seen the growth I will say that up until now, they finally see where we're headed. I think being in an apartment and telling them, like, this is what I'm going to do wasn't very secure for them. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think Miguel played a huge role in, in me believing in myself. And I think I think his dad gave that to him because I just always knowing, like, you can do it. Yeah, you can get through it. Yeah. Love that. Love that. I This journey is a separate type of journey. It's not something that most... It's not traditional. It's not traditional. I think... They say maybe there's out of the entire population, 10% are entrepreneurs and out of that 10%, 1% makes it. It's very, very tough. So everyone does have that opinion. It's pretty valid that we're probably not going to make it. You know, we're probably not. But at the end of the day, with all due respect to everyone, we understand you're protective. We, we, you know, we, we get it, but we're like cut from a different cloth. You know, we're, we're risk takers. We're the ones that are going to build companies build companies for us to serve, build companies to build better products. So the world does need people like us. And um, even though the support's not there, we're going to make sure like they, we, we, we prove them right. Like we prove them that we prove ourselves that we make sure that um, we're going to be as successful as we can be. All right. As far as support too, I know that in the beginning you have a lot of support from friends, family, but when times get tough, because in business, there's ups and downs. And I, I want to bring that to light. A lot of people on social media always try to claim like, oh, everyone's doing well. And it's bullshit. It's, it's fucking glamorized. bullshit. It's yeah. bullshit. Um, there's ups and downs in business, especially in your first, I would say, I mean, f your entire business life. But the first five to ten years, there's always going to be ups and downs. Always. Um, how do you guys deal with with tough times? You know, tough times. I know you guys have ups and downs like I like every other business. Um, how do you guys keep yourselves motivated? How do you guys um, keep your team motivated as real support? Yeah, I feel like it was it was really tough because like at the beginning, obviously, COVID kind of sparked the beginning of so many entrepreneurs. Everything was really, really good for everybody. Everybody just seeing like, oh, my God, this is like yep. limitless. Yeah. And then things started to change, you know, like the sales started going down. Everybody's like, it wasn't just us. Everybody's yeah. sales started going down. People weren't like shopping Buying as anymore. much. Yeah. yeah. So obviously like we go through our ups and downs. It's, it's crazy. Like it's like a drug. Like sometimes you're so euphoric. It feels like I'm a, I'm, I'm a beatable. Yep. And then sometimes you're just so down and it's, it's really hard to dig yourself out of it, but luckily, like, we have each other. Um, she can feel when I'm down. I can feel when she's down. And I feel like that 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 really helps us. Having a good partnership between you guys definitely yeah. has, has. And it, it's really hard to build a... Uh, um, they say it's hard to build a, a business with, like, your significant other, with your wife, with your whatever it is. I don't think so. I think you need someone there that's going to be there when you're not at 100%, when you're not fully, you know, into the business or something happens. You know, someone to have your back and just, like, put you back on track. So I know having both of you guys together is definitely something that was meant to happen. And you guys have really made a lot of it. Um, future goals for you guys. Future goals as far as um, 
the vision for the company. Uh, currently, if you guys want to share, you guys just broke a million dollars in sales. Was it last year? Um, uh, I believe it was the two years the year in a row. For that, yeah, we, okay. two years in a row. Two um, years in a row for a million dollars in sales. Okay, yeah, we stayed pretty much about the same like the past two years. I would say, which is hard. It's hard. I want to make sure people know that it's hard to stay consistent. You know, mm -hmm. it's hard, especially after that that COVID boom that everyone felt. Like it's hard to stay consistent. It's hard to even reach those same numbers. Most people say they're on their way up. Doubt it. Yeah, it's not. It's not, buddy. Like, I can tell. I can tell. I saw what, you know, there's a bunch. I know. We can feel it. We're real business owners. We feel if people are shopping. We feel if the product's changing. Um, but kudos to you guys, really. Back-to-back million-dollar years for a company that's been officially, what, four years? Three years? Uh, officially? Four years. Four years, four years officially. Yeah. So, congrats. So, what are some of the goals now going into, um, going into this year and going into next year? So, one thing that we really learned was, like, scaling properly so for us we can bring in as many sales as we want but if we can't send out our products on time if we're not keeping our customers happy then we don't have a business mm -hmm. so for us it was getting those processes down that's why this year we we you mentioned to us about like our workflow and everything and we took the time the beginning of this year to completely remodel this warehouse um at the beginning it was our workflow was just all over the place so we kind of optimized our workflow um, moved literally everything around stopped production for like a whole i would say like month and a half yeah. um and we were just trying to get this warehouse to the best that it could be optimize it yep. for efficiency yes mm -hmm. and then um yeah we just went from there i think um our mentality like when we first started the business was always just sales and since that's like my priority I feel like I was so honed in on like making sure we were always getting that. I feel like this year we kind of took a step back and we're like, okay, what is, what are we trying to do and how do we do it properly? Um, I feel like in the beginning when we first started this, it was like a race, like we need to get to it now and we need to do it now and how are we going to get there? And I feel like this year our mentality has changed where we're like, it's okay because we know what we're capable of. It's okay to stop production 100 percent lose out on the sales because it's going to come back to us 10 times more um for example like we bought a machine to engrave on jewelry thinking we're going to have the time to do it we didn't um this year we finally got to do that and we've seen the return on it already and it's just us taking the time to to get there and understanding that it's not a race um i think it's crazy to think back now because that would not have been my mentality the first year um, now I know that it's okay to slow down a little bit. And that doesn't mean that my mind is not on the sales. It just means that we're a little bit more careful about the choices that we make and how we're going to get there because it's going to come back to us 10 times more. Definitely. It's called aggressive patience, which you guys are talking about. You know, we, you know, you're hungry still, but you know, you have to put these systems in place, you know, to make sure that you're ahead in the long term because you're not competing. Um, say you're competing with some, you're not, your old self, right? You're going to outclass it. You're on a different level. Now, you know, now when you say change, I, I kept trying to replace that with like, you guys are upgrading. You're upgrading. It does take some time for the software to like upgrade to a different level. New version of you guys has came out. Hold oh, pause it because of New version of your of you guys has has came out. Um, as far as the workflow goes, what they were talking about is just so you guys can understand a little bit more about it is in this warehouse now it's optimized and made for packages to be manufactured and put together and then out for delivery, out for shipment. Um, so they've done that, and I'm sure it has brought a lot of more peace of mind and more organization. Yeah. You know, more organization. And when you guys do these things too, and this goes for for all businesses. You guys do it for the company and the team members, the employees, they realize it. They realize that you guys are investing into the company, not just back into your pockets or back into, you know, your trips or whatever. So you're actually investing into the company. Having this room, when you guys remodeled this, it, it cost you guys a good amount of money that it needed to be done, but it motivates everyone. It motivates you guys. It motivates the team to make sure that, you know, you guys are growing. There is change happening, not not just any change, but upgrade, you know, upgrade change that that doesn't make you guys a lot more money in the long term. And like with that, going back to what I was saying, um, you guys are now going to compete with like the big boys. I call it like the big leagues. You know, you want to operate at that level. You want to operate where 
you're competing with multi-million dollar companies. We met before and we talked about how we have to have that mentality where we're operating at that level. We're not a million dollar company anymore. We're a multi-million dollar company. So we have to have that mindset. And how does a multi-million dollar company operate? With systems, with processes, with workflow, with software. And that's what we're integrating into both of our companies. Um, so I'm, I'm really happy to hear that you guys have those goals. And I hope that's a lesson to a lot of business owners too, that it's okay to pause sometimes and reset. Just reset and upgrade into something better because now you're playing the long game. You're not playing that like you were talking about. I just want this year. What do you mm -hmm. have to do this year? It has to be, all right, now I'm playing the five-year game. Now I'm playing the 10-year game. And now I'm going to beat you in that 10-year game to whatever, however your competition is. Um, all right, so some personal goals of your guys is just each other. Like what is something that you guys are, you guys have planned for, you know, personal goals that you guys think are going to help your life or career right now? What are you guys going through right now? One thing that I wanted to do for our team is be a better leader. I will say when we first started this business, it's not something that was at the top of my list. Um, I've always wanted to work out. I've always wanted to be this way, but it was not a priority for me. Um, and I feel like running a business, you're even 10 times busier than you are working the nine to five. Um, and I feel like my priorities have changed for myself as a person. Um, I think now I'm learning to take care of myself a little bit more. Like what are my personal goals as a leader, whether that's like working out or um, just being comfortable with doing things that make me uncomfortable, um, learning to just challenge myself in new ways that I wouldn't do before. Yeah. Um, so I think all in all that will make me a better leader and just wanting to be different than someone else. Yeah. I, I, I think that the new entrepreneur needs to have fitness in their life. Fitness, also that that includes the mind, right? Because it's the body. To compete with these people that that are coming up, the youngsters now too, they're like 18, 19. They're a lot smarter than we were at that age because of technology. So for us to compete, we have to have all those things checked off. I promise you there's no other guy in my industry, let's say, that's as probably competitive as me that can beat me in a fitness, um, finances, and you know, the four things that I talk about, faith, fitness, finance, and family. There's no way. So to be a full entrepreneur, you have to, adopt that mindset like i have to be sharp i have to be sharp mentally how, do I, how am i sharp mentally about taking care of my body taking care of my fitness what i put in my body the types of supplements i take obviously you guys see i, I run every single day and it's not just because like i want to be fit and i want to look good that's just part of it right but it's more because i want to fucking compete with the best and I need every single leverage that I can when I'm competing with a person that probably has a little bit more money than me, probably has a little bit more experience than me. So I need every single edge that I can, and that includes fitness. And that's the type of mentality you need to have when you're operating from where we come from. We come from really very low-income communities, right? We're competing with people that have 10 steps ahead of us, that have a lot more um, leverage than us. So we can't fuck up. We have to have that mentality. You know, a lot of people get judged for for being too competitive they don't know what the fuck we've been through you know when you say um i wanted to prove people wrong we need that fucking energy we need that type of of motivation that other people didn't have you know they didn't need to go through all that they didn't need to lose their house we did to have that fucking motivation so yeah i'll take any leverage i can and fitness for sure a thousand percent we need it from where we come from um mike some personal goals for you um for me it would just be kind of getting out of, out of my comfort zone so uh, to kind of share a little bit about myself i'm kind of closed off i'm not like a loud person or anything like that and i trying to work on like myself as being a leader and being able to communicate with my team and being able to point them in the right directions um and that's just one thing that i've really been trying to to work on so leading by example mm -hmm. being more vocal things like that okay um i used to think that People were born leaders. I have completely scratched that off. Like, there's no way you're built yourself into a leader. And you do that by experiences. You do that by learning from others. Um, you have time. You have time. I really do believe you have time. I don't, I remember, like, I knew that I, I would watch other people. Like, he was born to be a leader. That's what he was. But there's no way. Leaders are built by experience and by practicing and by failing and then by sharing and making other people better. Um, so I know a lot of people have that misconception. I'm not sure if you guys do, like, if you guys see other people like, oh, he was born to do this. Like he has that charisma. He has, you know, that voice or whatever it is. It's not, man. It, it, you're built yourself to be a leader through experiences. So uh, both of you guys are on the same page as far as like um, 
what your goals are personally and i i really like to see that i'm, I'm sure you guys this team are super happy to have you guys you guys are both under 30 right 28 28 28, 28. okay you guys started when you the business when you guys were like what 24 24 24 super young Super young. That's awesome. And I'm, I'm happy to see where you guys have gotten to now. Um, I'm going to show them off a little bit. They are one of the most hardworking people I have ever met. I'm so close to them. I love spending time with them. I love talking to them. I love, I love being motivated by them because I literally saw their journey from nothing to what they have now. And not only that, but the hunger that you guys still have. The hunger of wanting to grow and the hunger, more than importantly, that, that you guys still want to learn. You guys are still humble enough to want to learn from anybody. You guys are always talking about meeting new people and, and what they taught you guys. And that's so, so motivating to me. Um, I do look up to you guys. I am super, super ha happy to be part of your guys' circle. And yeah, I just want to make it public. Like they're one of the best people ever like really i am super super happy to have you guys here that's why i wanted to make you guys a first guest because i want people to remember this is the first interview with the simply crafty customs team and we'll interview them again when they're a multi-million dollar company which i know they will be so you guys can see the growth and see the change and see the upgrade and just witness the journey that they're going to go through make sure to follow them if you guys want to share your guys' social media um, um it's at simply crafty customs for instagram and tiktok perfect um website where can they buy your stuff etsy <laughs> etsy uh, simplycraftycustoms.com um for now that takes you to our etsy shop okay. uh we're working on our our website okay perfect perfect um yeah make sure to follow them on instagram they, they they're very active on there buy their products they have really 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 good products uh they take their time crafting every single one of them handmade like they literally cut the wood Break it down into little pieces, put it all back together, make it look nice for you guys. That's the best way I can explain it <laughs> in very short form. But again, um, thank you guys again. Mike, Ashley, I love you guys. I really, really do. I'm so, so happy to have you guys as the first episode. And I hope this brings a lot of value to other people. And I know it will with the stories you guys share with the value you guys brought. Um, any last words, any recommendations for any anyone going through a tough time um, or entrepreneurs in the same journey that you guys have, let's say someone that is in the laser engraving business, what is something that you guys would recommend for them? Um, I would say never give up. I think that's what kind of separated us from everybody else. There are so many people that started their businesses in COVID and they 90% of them are all gone. We could have easily been one of those companies too, but we decided to stick with it. Keep going, keep going hard. Every, whatever you want to do, if you go hard, you can achieve it. Love it. Ash? Um, I would say sometimes your ideas sound a little crazy. Um, but if they do to someone, then I think that they shouldn't be in your circle. Um, I also think that you have to sometimes be your number one cheerleader and then prove people wrong. Love it. Thank you guys so, so much again for being part of the podcast. Uh, make sure to follow us at First Mill. A lot more shows coming up. And make sure to follow Simply Crafty Customs. Shop simplycraftycustoms.com. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure to share the show. There's no sponsors here. The only sponsor today is Simply Crafty Customs. All right. Thank so you guys again. <laughs> and looking forward to a lot more episodes. Have a good one, guys.